Hello everyone, so welcome back. So I'm here with another Wednesday Talks. So this time it will be on the mainframe COBOL DB2 compilation process. And the last week I have given the complete uh, COBOL DB2 uh, refresher. I can say like DB2 refresher with all the different topics that has been covered. And uh, the, in that refresher I have missed the compilation process. Thought like I'll make it another video wantedly I or have done that so that I can explain in detail about this process and this uh, will be very much helpful uh, even at the interview level and uh, when you're attending an interview and also in your day-to-day -day, uh, work life that you're working if you're working on uh, especially on the COBOL DB2 process so most of the time we miss uh, this compilation process we just directly go to the COBOL DB2 process we compile we execute we get the results that's it so but uh, it's always better to know in detail about how this compilation happens. Why? Because COBOL is separate and DB2 is a separate uh, uh, subsystem and how these uh, conversation or the crosstalk happens between these two different languages, right? COBOL is a programming language and DB2 is a relational database. So how is this communication happening? From COBOL, how uh, you're calling these SQL queries and from SQL, how it is connecting to the database and how the details are uh, being fetched and it's been thrown right so we'll, we'll understand everything in this uh, video okay so first as my tutorial as I said it's a COBOL DB2 compilation process so first there are various steps involved before we can run or execute a COBOL DB2 program I'm hoping that you have a COBOL DB2 program written and uh, if not I'll be showing you I'll explain you with the program as well so that's uh, that's the first step that we need to know in order to understand this compilation process if you haven't done that just please watch my earlier video where the complete overview or the db2 refresher is given so in order to better understand on this okay so the video will we'll talk about the various steps uh, that we need to run or execute in order to process this okay and uh, as i said this is one of the most important question that's been asked in interview so let's talk about the life cycle and uh, the in the COBOL DB2 compilation how the process starts so first step uh, pre-compilation next it will have a compilation prod then link edit and then we'll create a package and then it's a bind will uh, bind a plan so that's uh, so those are the various uh, steps I can say that we will undergo uh, when COBOL DB2 in a within COBOL DB2 compilation process as you can see in the picture here you have the COBOL DB2 source program so the first it will be sent to the pre-compiler pre-compiler what it will do is it will separate uh, COBOL uh, COBOL program uh, code and the SQL statement as a separate within the COBOL program you might have written with exec SQL and end exec in between that you have a uh, statements so those statements are being separated from the COBOL program and it creates the DBRM member okay so that member is stored in a separate uh, PDS that's called as a TBRM library okay so that is this is the first thing here and another thing is so whatever the SQL statements that you have written so that will be commented in this COBOL program so that will happen during the pre-compilation time okay and uh, the rest of the code is uh, easily understood by the COBOL right so that particular piece of code will be converted to the object object code and that object code will be stored in a object COBOL load library if there are any sub programs so those programs are also be uh, stored in that specific load library okay so that's the first part then uh, coming to here so from the DBRM we create a bind package and plan is created and at the end of the at the end so all this when you try to run this uh, program so it takes the object program from the COBOL and the plan from this DBRM and then it will run it so what happens here is when we are trying to separate a timestamp will be generated for the COBOL when it is separated and the DBRM when it is separated so that's timestamp which should match so when this is uh, executed or run we'll look into detail don't worry about that so as I said the first step one is a pre-compilation the COBOL compiler doesn't know about SQL statement with this reason the COBOL DB2 program has to undergo the pre-compilation process that's the first point and uh, what is a uh, program that we use in order to do a pre-compilation DSN HPC 
is the program that is being used in order to do this okay what it will do what this program responsibility is so it expands all the copybooks declared within the include statements that is I'm talking about the exit SQL and end exit statement so you have an include statement then validates the table declaration using in the DGN used in the DCL uh, DCL gen copybook okay then checks the syntactical errors or any SQL statements and also validate the fields based on the table declaration from the DCL gen copybook this is the third one and the next one is extracts all sta st SQL statements into DBRM and replaces X SQL statements with COBOL call statements so as I said so when you have the COBOL DB2 program and it's sent to the pre-compilation we have we have seen in the last image you have seen COBOL object code is separated and the SQL statements are being separated so that that is nothing but sir it's a DBRM lib that's the COBOL code which is replaced with a call statement and that we call it as a modified source okay replaced with a call statement is called as a modified so that's the first, fourth one and uh, at the same time it generates the timestamps for both modified source and as well as the DBRM so these are checked at the runtime as I mentioned earlier right and very important point so this may be asked in the interview as well so pre-compilation can be executed even if the DB2 is down so you have the COBOL DB2 so can we can I do pre-compilation if the DB2 is down yes absolutely so we are not connecting to a DB2 and checking the table is existing or not so that we are not doing so what we are doing is we are checking the syntactical errors on the SQL statements so that's the only thing but we are not connecting to the uh, DB2 so that's what we need to answer it so if, if anyone asks you in the interview so you can just say that pre-compilation can be executed even if DB2 is down okay so so this is how I mean this is just a snapshot of it how what are the important parameters that we need to pass so whenever you're doing a COBOL DB2 so if you have a copy book you need to pass that copy book and DCL gen so that is the SQL uh, include statements will be there in the DCL gen and then DBRM lib so that is needed where uh, the SQL statements the uh, DBRM library will be there database repository module and uh, the next one is a load module the pure COBOL uh, source code the uh, load lib and uh, the next the complete uh, COBOL DB2 program and you can specify the member I mean this is just a snapshot of way that we work on so but uh, each one have their own unique way of writing this and either they can directly have the statements uh, program statements or they can uh, pass it to the proc it depends okay so let's see what is what has happened in the pre-compilation if you look at this program so here we had a SQL statements right exit SQL encoder and similarly we you may be seeing a different uh, exit statements so in pre-compilation what happens so so this code is being commented out here right this is how it gets commented out so that's the first thing that it has done in the pre-compilation and then is anyways it also checked the syntaxes and everything and then it has created a DBRM lib okay so next one is a compile so it is same as a normal COBOL compilation it takes the modified source as an input and compiles and we need to remember right so the another important point is IGY CRCTL is the program that is used for the compilation now we we purely have the only the COBOL uh, modified source so where all the piece of uh, eggs I mean SQL statements being committed out then why can't we use this right so that's where uh, we again IGY CRCTL is usually is used that compiles the pure modified source COBOL source so that's if you look at the left side COBOL DB2 it pre-compiles goes to the COBOL and then it generates the object code okay then what next link edit right so this takes the object module from the compile step and also takes the sub program load modules and generates the load module obviously right so in a COBOL program it's a COBOL DB2 it need not be just a simple COBOL program and DB2 there may be sub programs that you may be calling right so if you're working in real time so you may be seeing a lot of different uh, sub programs uh, that you may be trying to pull for any some business logics right so it can be related to the tables uh, something related to the information related to the accounts validation or something related to the transactions or whatever it is okay so that has the specific uh, sub modules so that will be uh, used 
okay so then link edit right in link edit what is the program that we use iewl iewl is the program uh, that, that creates the object module to link object module okay what's next uh, so here in the link edit that is nothing but scan i can say like it's executable file okay so that's the link edit and the next is a bind right so very important point so now left part is done so that is this part is completed now we are going to the right side uh, that is on the dbrm so cobol is fine so everything is done okay that looks good but what about the dbrm what are we going to do if using dbrm we need to bind okay so which is extracted in the what is dbrm which is extracted in the pre compilation and it is not an executable file right so it has to undergo through bound i mean sorry bind process which makes the statements to be executable right so so far whatever the dbrm library is there it is not even executable for to make a cobol program as an executable so first you will be compiling then you you will be doing a link edit then it creates the load module similarly for the dbrm to make it to executable so we have to bind it right so this is nothing but it's a bind process what happens in the bind bind checks the sql statements with the db2 cataloged entries see another important interview question that may be asked so here we need to uh, connect to the db2 so i mean see so here uh, checks the sql statements with the db2 catalog entry okay and checks authorization of the programmer on the sql statements whether this particular program have an uh, access whoever is binding or uh, binding this jcl that particular jcl for that particular cobol db2 program for that specific db rm so does he has an authorization access that's the second point and checks the syntax errors for all the sql statement which are left by the pre compiler the initial scanning will be done uh in the pre compilation but left over maybe how many fields are there whatever the fields that are there we select two fields and that two fields are existing in the table so so though that kind of a syntax is, uh, errors will be checked in this and then it it creates a package which contains the optimized access path then finally optimized is a sub, what is optimized is uh, access path optimized is a sub component or sub arm of a bind which will use for statistics okay so this is used for run stats utility for the db2 catalog okay so that's the fourth step i can say which is nothing but a bind okay so then what's next so if you look at here uh, the binding jcl how it looks so ikg ft01 is a utility that we use and you have the dbrm lib so where the actual dbrm uh uh library that is been generated in the pre compilation is stored here so we'll give this as an input to this program and uh, we specify this uh, bind parameters and this what we are going to do uh, what we are going to mention is so dbrm bind member so this member is already there in this uh, plan name so this is the plan name we have to give which is very much mandatory and it depends on the project uh, that you are working so make please make sure uh, to check the plan name that you have to use for your specific uh, that particular new program existing program uh, that you are working on so then action uh, isolation cursor stability repeatable read and uh, so these different options you will be getting so we'll also talk about that as well then validate that's a bind and release commit owner uh, so you can specify the owner it's basically the id that we mentioned the qualifier so it's nothing but it's a table space when we are trying to create so that qualifier can be used so that if you specify this qualifier need not to be used within the uh, sql query statement that you might be using i mean this the just a snapshot of it how the bind looks okay now the question here is what is db2 catalog okay so but before we go into the db2 catalog let's connect to the mainframe and see how what are the theory part that now explain so let's see in the practical world and understand more on this okay so this is my co simple uh, cobol db2 program so what i'm trying to do here is so the first statement is exec sql so here we call the uh, i can say the dcl gen library where uh, you have uh, the converted the i mean 
SQL uh, fields are being converted uh, to uh, the COBOL uh, understandable format uh, uh, the fields declaration then SQL CA then what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to pull this uh, fields and uh, then trying to display those uh, extracted fields this specific thing if you it is retrieving more than one fee one record then we need to use a cursor just I'm not going to there so for for now just it's a simple program I have now so a lot what we'll do is just try to do a pre compilation the first step is a pre compilation part so make sure uh, you have mapped your source library correct so that is there and uh, the program name is cobol db2 and the first one the pro that's the main uh, member and also make sure you have your dbrm lib and uh, so this is for the purely sql statements and this is for cobol uh, coding part and uh, this is for the include statement that you have mentioned in the program and if you are using any copy books within your program just mention that so these are all the important libraries that we need to mention uh, when you are pre compiling okay let me submit this okay this is being running and let's see what happens okay it ended so let's go to the spool and look at the output okay okay so if you look at this JCL so what is the first step we have here right so DSN HPC as I explained earlier so DSN HPC is a program that is used for the pre compilation part what will happen in this right so you have specified all the COBOL program so if you recall my points what that I have mentioned it uh, creates uh, it generates the DBRM lib right and also it will uh, it will uh, create another load lib as well so for the uh, COBOL I mean COBOL uh, uh, what you can say uh, updated core source code okay so this is the first step okay let me go back again and show you how it works okay this is PC okay so here if you go here and look at here mm, let me go okay what it has done in the first pre-compilation part so this DSN HPC has expanded so the first thing is it expanded all the uh, SQL statements that is there so it has expanded so then that's fine here and then later on what it will do is and then this later on when it's sent to the COBOL so within the COBOL so let me check okay so if you look at here right uh, all the SQL statements are been commented all the SQL statements are being commented out right so if I look for call okay so then it's everything will be converted to the call statements all the SQL statements will be uh, converted to the call statements and then later on the SQL code whatever was there so that's been uh, commented out okay that's the next step so then next finally so it uh, link edits so if you want to look at the program so what that I have explained there so the first one is DSN HPC then again IGYCR CTL then IEWL is a link edit right so let's look at uh, the DBRM as well so if you look at this so this is not an executable so this is not executable so it's not in an executable format so that need to be uh, converted to an executable format whereas the load lib so whereas the load lib is in an executable format so this particular is an executable format this is fine so but DBRM is not in an executable format so for that what we need to do is we need to bind it so the next step would be the bind okay okay so here we need to mention the this is the JCL for the binding so here we have the uh, uh, library for the bind and then you can see the member of this is this is there in this library and the plan name so as I've mentioned it depends on the project that you're working just make sure to ask for the plan name that we need to create why because this is the one which we use uh, when we are executing this okay the plan name should be there and then uh, you can have these uh, default uh, parameters and then the owner and encoding so all these parameters will be there and then submit okay 
so submit is successful and let's go to spool and see how the DB2 bind has worked now you can see the DB2 bind is successful so so it converts uh, the DBRM into an uh, executable uh, format okay if you want to look at the JCL and the JCL so the main uh, the thing is that we are focused on this IKJE FT01 okay so that's cool okay what's the next step next step is to run the uh, COBOL DB2 program right okay so during uh, in order to run the COBOL DB2 program so again we use an IKJE FT01 utility or we call it as as in a program of the COBOL DB2 running in the batch okay so DSN system so which in which system your DB2 is there so that system name you need to give it so it changes either depends upon the test QA model production so it changes so please make sure if you're running in the unit testing so that system name will be different if you're running in the production that will be different please be cautious about this what happens sometimes so you will be testing it and while doing to the production so you sometimes forget to change this if you're doing that and you think like okay so everything is fine move to production when it is running on the production on the first day damn so there is some mistake there so please be cautious and uh, have a checklist keep it ready and then please make sure to update so I'm sharing my experience that one time I have made this mistake so it has caused a lot of impact so don't do that okay so just make sure about the system that we are using and sometimes during from the beginning itself uh, right and the program uh, the COBOL DB21 and then plan name that you have given in the binding time so that you have to mention and the library of the COBOL DB21 okay so now let's run this so I'm exp I'm trying to display uh, the what happened here okay uh, uh, okay so it's the wall DB21 it's, it's missed it okay so let's run this and then what happens here I'm trying to uh, check the results of it just trying to display some employee ID okay and employee salary so let's see what happened okay so now you can see there so you can see the employee ID and salary is maybe the salary is zero so that's the reason it displayed there so that's how we can display it I mean this is a basic simple program so they way you may be retrieving a lot of records you may be calling, uh, pulling the table then updating storing back to the VSAM files or the flat files a lot of things a lot of things will happen we're using the same utility so you'll be using DB to load and unload so so where for the DB2 load and unload so you'll be having a different uh, uh, program I can say the different option that you need to specify where you try to uh, retrieve all the table records to your flat file so that's the load unload is from flat file you are loading back to the table so at the one time so that's the another batch job so you you're not, not going to write any cobalt program for that so it's the utility will take care of that yeah, let's also see uh, how this uh, unload is also used just let me show you that as well so that it covers both the load and unload as also <laughs> as part of this okay so I'll, I'll come back to the compilation part just wanted to have a quick snapshot or a quick view about uh, the unload that we do so normally we use IKJ FT01 utility and we specify these things and uh, this is the table that you wanted to load all the records from the table and uh, uh, to the I mean here again so we use a program the DB2 utility program that is DSNT IAUL and the plan name should be the same thing or it can be different uh, mostly it will be the same thing so it depends uh, I mean this is uh, how we, if we code it here the plan name so it is same and then we specify where you want it to load the data the data set so as soon as you run this so if you have an access to this uh, uh, load utility unload utility you will be able to load all the records to this uh, uh, flat file or a data sets for uh, loading the data from uh, uh, I can say like the input uh, file you have some data from this you wanted to load it into the uh, table so we use a program named as DSN util B 
okay this is also an interview question that's been asked and then you can uh, load the data uh, within the specific table so that's specified and you can also specify the records here or similarly as I mentioned here so here uh, you can specify the data set name if you or if you want to directly add that just you can simply comment this and just you can mention the records there so or you can specify the DD name here itself or on the top that should be fine and uh, that's fair uh, so we will be specifying the, all the load data which table you are loading it and all those uh, things will be specified so this is about the DB to load and unload so coming back to the compilation part okay that was a quick uh, uh, I can say the practical test session on the what are the theory part that we have completed so far and I have sh I think I have shown all the steps uh, starting from the pre-compilation, the compilation, the link edit and the bind and the several things right. So let's look at more detail about this. Uh, what is DB2 catalog? It is a DB2 subsystem I can say. Uh, subsystem object repository. It contains the system defined tables like sys tables, sys columns, sys views, indexes, index pieces and everything. Everything is stored in the DB2 catalog. So whenever the pre-compilation is done so it has an uh, DB2, it stores an entry in the DB2 catalog where it's all the stores, the keys, the timestamps and everything is being stored. Whenever you run it so it makes a reference and it makes sure it's okay what are the plan that you are uh, created so it may it has an entry of that and so on okay and we also hear about the statistics so the number of columns the types of index the number of indexes number of views types of query and columns all this is nothing but it's a statistic okay if you look at the snapshot here so what is happening in the in the bind process right so dbrm it's getting to bind it optimizes optimizes it finds the shortest path okay uh, for the plan and then you have the runtime supervisor so whenever when you give the plan name so it goes and it checks all those things okay so this is about the package this is about the plan and this is about the running uh, so that we have seen earlier right so if you want to if you don't if you want to look into more about the bind parameters that we use so like you might have seen so if you look at the snapshot here so in during the bind so we, we have seen several different parameters that we have passed like isolation what is isolation qualifier the plan name action name so let's look at those details as well so within the first one that you have seen is isolation so we have cursor stability repeatable read so and you are so right what is cursor stability when a row is selected then it applies lock on that particular page and when it moves to the next row which is on another page then the lock held on first page is released and it is held on the second page and similarly when a row is updated then the page is locked until uh, next commit is issued most of the real applications use this option so in, in your program so you might be seeing isolation most of the cases CS right and if you are using and load and unload utilities uh, I mean uh, unload so maybe you may be seeing a UA different thing there okay you are or RR okay so whenever you're trying to bind it so most probably you'll be seeing cursor stability and next one is repeatable read so when a row is read then page is locked until the next commit point all rows that are read are locked until next commit point when a program wants to read the same record again and again then that should not be modified by another program so in that case we use repeatable read okay or when we want to uh, have a mass updates are required so you have like 1 million records that may need to be updated so so that time we can use repeatable read so that nothing no other uh, system whoever is trying to access that particular table will lock it okay so especially this will uh, when mass updates we do at the night times I mean batch times so at the in that case case we can use a repeatability it's uh, mostly uh, if you are using an unload or a load things so then you can use this repeatable read and the another one is uncommitted read or we call it as a dirty read it does not hold any locks on the table it can read the uncommitted rows rows that are updated but not committed once after reading the road, the other programs can roll back the updates done on the roads. Accessing data is faster, but you may get incorrect data. Uh, 
use this option very carefully so as of the as the point mentioned there be cautious on this okay so then we have used a validate bind or run it validates db2 objects either bind time or run time and validate bind time is always better uh, because it reduces the burden is run time also if it is at the bind time then it will be done one time only okay so this is another one then we use action add or replace explain yes or no I hope uh, when we are using action add or replace uh, add member to the package or plan so it fails if the member is already bound and uh, replace it will add member to the package or plan if it is the first time otherwise it will replace the existing and what is explain? It will explain about the access path that is taken into the user plan if S is given. Okay. Then next we will be seeing similarly qualifier, uh, exec SQL and so on. Okay. So for example, when we use this qualifier, right? So when you are specifying, normally what we do whenever we write a query, right? So we select star from table name uh, like a uh, database name and then table space names, right? So instead, if you want to avoid that, uh, table space name or the database name so then in that case so then you can just uh, you can just mention this uh, qualifier name and then simply uh, you can directly use the table name okay Ta instead of table space name and then the table name just specify that table space name and then you can run it so that's the qualifier okay if you look at here the, this is about how it looks if you specify the qualifier name so that's where it looks at. okay so the important terms that we have used so far DBRM, pre-compiler, package, plan, bind, and run. So, at the quick glance, uh, again, uh, I'll recap the things that we have covered so far. DBRM, it will contain the stripped out statements, that is plan and package. It will check syntax errors, privileges, etc. And what about the pre-compiler produces DBRM that modified source program with commanded, uh, commanded SQL statement, then package contains the executed SQL statement plan contains the access path to the package and what about the bind converts DBRM into an executable format and what about run it is a process of executing the executed SQL statements and modified source program so this covers the entire process that I have uh, been explaining so far from a couple of minutes so in interview all these questions will be asked okay I am I'm damn sure about this so if an interviewer uh, if your topic is on the cobalt DB2 these questions are asked mandatory if you just give this definition I think that should be enough okay that's that covers the um, complete uh, the compilation process of the cobalt DB2 so what are what are we discussed we discussed all these points that we have mentioned here and also uh, I have covered an, uh, two more things like load and unload as well and I, f I think I have shown how the JCL looks for the load and unload and uh, so that's it okay I think I almost tried to cover all different concepts that will be used in the DB2 if I have missed it if you think like there are more things to be learned please do comment in the below comment section I'll try to make more more and more videos on this and thank you so much guys so a simple request from my end is uh, please do share these videos to all the mainframe uh, techies developers the QA team or anyone so it's much appreciated uh, so thanks a lot for your all supports the main motto is to uh, share my uh, mainframe experience and so that it can be useful to everyone and let's uh, expand this mainframe community okay so thanks a lot